follow you up there? Or stay right here? Yeah. Next to, yeah. You guys look awesome. You look awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. What's happening? What's happening? Oh, beautiful. Gorgeous. says that God is love and that those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them and we're here today because to some extent we believe that we believe that the thing that keeps the universe spinning isn't some distant and unknown thing it's a presence that moves with us in our lives and it's best known in loving relationship marriage is one of those relationships and when it's done right it's a close-up look at what life is all about commitment and growth and joy and sacrifice and putting another person first, and finding in the midst of these things a deep freedom and peace. If you've known this kind of love, then you have known God. And so we know as we come together today that love is present and it connects us all to one another in powerful ways. Don and Sam have chosen to love one another truly and deeply, and we give thanks for them. And we celebrate with them as they take the next step into their lives together. The reading that they've chosen today is one that expresses for them what this looks like, and the blessing that they'll need to sustain this loving relationship, to continue to strive together, to choose to love one another through everything, all the ups and downs of life, to give one another the freedom to grow and to commit and to support and to be honest and patient with one another, even as love connects and transforms them together. So we add our blessing to theirs, and we welcome you this day to celebrate the wedding of Don and Sam. So, Don and Sam, your marriage is intended to join you for life in a relationship so intimate and personal that it will change your whole being. God offers you the hope and indeed the promise of a love that is true and mature. So Sam, do you take Dawn to be your wife and do you commit yourself to her to be responsible in the marriage relationship, to give yourself to her in love and in work, to invite her fully into your being so that she can know who you are, to cherish her above all others, and to respect her individuality, encouraging her to be herself, 
and to grow into all that God intends. I do. It's, oh, you got it. You got the line already. <laughs> <laughs> I, it I do. Well done. Your line will be the same one. Perfect. All right. Don, do you take Sam to be your husband and do you commit yourself to him to be responsible in the marriage relationship, to give yourself to him in love and in work, to invite him fully into your being so that he can know who you are and cherish him above all others, to respect his individuality, encouraging him to be himself, and to grow in all that God intends. I do. There you go. <laughs> One of the ways that they want to grow into all that God intends is to celebrate uh, the sacrament of baptism during this wedding. It's so sort of a unique instance um, to do this in this way, and I love it uh, because it's kind of a cool statement for them uh, for what it means to be together. For Christians, baptism is an outward sign of something that's already true, uh, sort of like Standing up in a, in a marriage ceremony or a wedding ceremony doesn't make a marriage. It's, it's how you live it out in life. So for us, the thing that's already true is God's grace, that God loves and created each one of us and has a purpose for us in this world. And so for children who can't answer for themselves, and Sebastian's going to come join us in just a minute, though he doesn't know it yet. <laughs> um, baptism is a way for a community to commit to loving a child and helping them to grow up in love and grace so they can see the best parts of being a Christian, so that one day they might choose that for themselves or, or choose another way. They still have the option to do that, but it's sort of our way of saying, we believe that God loves this child, and we're going to love this child too. Uh, for adults, it's slightly different. It's a commitment that they're making to live their lives in, in integrity and in compassion and in justice um, and in spiritual connection to God through Jesus. Um, usually it's done, in, like I said, in the context of a worshiping community because it's all about the community saying, we will help each other do this. Today, you are that community. Today, you are the community who is sort of promising, pledging to grow and to support them, um, that, that is promising to help them learn what it means to walk in love and in faithfulness and in integrity. So, well done you. It's going to be great. All right. So, can we bring Sebastian up? The symbol that we use in the sacrament of baptism is water. Water is the most pervasive thing on the planet. It's seven percent of the planet. It's seven percent of our bodies. It's literally everywhere, even in the middle of the desert. There's a river running through the middle of Reno. Water is our symbol of God's grace. It's the thing that connects us. It's the thing that brings life to the world. It's the thing that helps us remember how interdependent we are and how necessary it is for us to take care of one another and to take care of our planet in order for us to move together um, towards all the things that we want, loving community being one of them. So we use this symbol of water in the sacrament of baptism. Ooh. Yeah, you get to come play in it and check wow. it out. Do you want to go splash in the water? We also baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And for us, what that means is that God shows up in a lot of ways. And that God will show up in ways that you're not expecting. As pervasively as water, God will bless your life if you're paying attention. So, Sebastian, you want to play in the water, buddy? You can play in the water. He's like, I'm not sure about this. He loves it. <laughs> Act like you're washing his hands and it'll splash him. Sacrament is an outward sign of an inward grace. And so, Sebastian, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, in God, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Would you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for your grace. We give you thanks for the many ways that you show up in our lives, 
Things like a dandelion growing up through the crack in the cement that reminds us that even in the midst of life's hardships, there is beauty, there is joy, and there is connection between us and one another, between us and you. And so we ask that you would bless these three wonderful people, and we add our blessing to yours, and we ask that as they go forth from this place, that you would continue to show them your love and your grace, that you would continue to guide them in the ways that they can live their lives out in love and in sacrifice for the whole world, that they might be bonded together as a family, and that in those intimate, loving relationships, they would learn how to forgive, how to be patient, how to be honest and kind and gentle, how to continue to grow into the face and the form of our brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Don and Sam have also asked for your blessing. So your line is going to be amen. Ready? The marriage of Don and Sam unites their families and creates a new one. And they ask for your blessing. If you rejoice in their union and pray God's blessing upon them, please respond by saying amen. 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 All right. I think you've got love and support in this room. I think that's why. <laughs> the reading that they've chosen is from the book of Colossians, uh, chapter 3. So chosen by God for this new life of love, dress in the wardrobe God picked out for you. Compassion, kindness, humility, quiet strength, discipline. Be even-tempered, content with second place, quick to forgive an offense. Forgive as quickly and completely as the master forgave you. And regardless of what else you put on, wear love. It's your basic all-purpose garment. Never be without it. Let the peace of Christ keep you in tune with each other, in step with each other. None of this going off and doing your own thing. And cultivate thankfulness. Let the word of Christ, the message, have the run of the house. Give it plenty of room in your lives. Instruct and direct one another using good common sense. And sing your hearts out to God. Let every detail of your lives, words, actions, whatever, be done in the name of the Master Jesus, thanking God the Father every step of the way. It's this great irony of the universe that the way that you experience love is by giving love. That means that marriage isn't just about being loved for all that you are, but in loving with all that you are. It's not just marrying the right partner, it's being the right partner. The reading and rituals that you've chosen today express that truth. That love isn't just a happy feeling or a cushy security. It's a decision that you make day after day in the big things and in the little things to put the other person first to develop in yourselves what the Apostle Paul calls the fruits of the Spirit. He's describing what this love looks like lived out in our lives, and he calls it joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. When we cultivate this kind of love, all these things grow in our lives. Affection for others, exuberance, serenity, a willingness to stick with things, a sense of compassion, and a conviction that a basic holiness permeates all things and all people. We find ourselves involved in loyal commitments, not needing to force our way and able to direct our energy wisely. If you're ever at a loss for how to love someone, take a look at the list in the scripture that you chose today and develop those things in yourselves. Develop those dimensions of love. Love is our antidote to narcissism, although kids do a pretty good job of that too. It's our panacea for all life's bumps and bruises, and it connects and it sustains us in a mysterious way even beyond this life. In this case, it makes a life out of two lives, transforms Don and Sam into one. Now, Don and Sam are unique individuals, and I'm sure you all have known them longer than I have and can attest to that. When we sat down to plan the actual ceremony, I don't think there was was any part of it where they chose the same thing for the same part of the ceremony. They always chose something different. She wanted to say these vows, and he wanted to say those, and she wanted to say these ring ceremony words, and he liked that one, but watching them make decisions together was kind of beautiful. I don't know if you all have ever seen them Rochambeau over something, (laughs) but that was kind of cool. And even when they won, sometimes they would still choose the other person's preference, which was kind of beautiful too. And in some parts of the ceremony, they simply chose to do it their own way, which is absolutely fine too, to vow to love and commit with words that more closely express their own personalities and sentiments, even if it meant essentially the same thing. 
In their new life together, instead of choosing one person's name for the whole family, they chose a new name together. A combination of Jackson and Samuels. It will become the Saxon family. I think it's beautiful the ways that they bend for one another. The ways that they choose together. It won't always be that easy, of course. It won't be as easy as sort of going down the list and saying, I like this one. Some decisions are of more moment than that. And living them out, living these words that you've chosen out today, is what will actually be the hard work, what will actually be the transformative experience. So continue to develop that love. All the different kinds of it in your life, individual, individually and together. It takes a while, it takes a long time. This life is a marathon, so be gentle with one another as you're learning. And be honest with one another so you can learn well. Don and Sam, if it is your intention to be united in this holy bond and covenant of marriage, please signify that desire by handing off your flowers and joining hands. Don, repeat after me. On this special day. On this special day. And in the eyes of God. And in the eyes of God. I dawn. I dawn. Take you, Sam. Take you, Sam. As my partner. As my partner. In life's journey. In life's journey. I vow to encourage you. I vow to encourage you. Through our walk together. Through our walk together. When the way becomes difficult. When the way becomes difficult. Or weary. Or weary. I promise to stand by you. I promise to stand by you. And with you. And with you. So that through our marriage, so that through our marriage, together, together, we can accomplish, we can accomplish all our hopes and dreams. All of our hopes and dreams. Sam, repeat after me. Dawn in the name of God. Dawn in the name of God. I take you to be my wife. I take you to be my wife. From this time onward. From this time onward. To join with you. To join with you. And share all that is to come. And share that all is to come. To give and to receive. To give and to receive. To speak and to listen. To speak and to listen. To inspire and to respond. To inspire and respond. In all our life together. In all of our life together. To be loyal to you with my whole being. To be loyal to you with my whole being. As long as we both shall. As long as we both shall live. I'm going to ask for the rings. <laughs> Thank you. In all ages and among all peoples, the ring has been a symbol of something that's measureless. Measureless, boundless devotion. It's a circle, which means it doesn't have a beginning, it doesn't have an ending. And it's precious, precious material, gold or platinum or silver, indicating the longevity and the preciousness of that love. Will you bless these rings with me? By your blessing, O oh God, may these rings be to Sam and Don symbols of unending love and faithfulness, reminding them of the covenant that they have made this day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Is that Sam? We take these and say, Don. Don. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. As a sign of my love and faithfulness. You put the ring on. Don, repeat after me. Sam, I give you this ring. Sam, I give you this ring as a sign of my vow. As a sign of my vow. And with all that I am. And with all that I am. And all that I have. And all that I have. I honor you. I honor you. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Sam and Don have chosen to perform a love letter and wine box ceremony. Um, this box contains a bottle of wine and two glasses and a love letter. Uh, from each to the other. Well, actually, the love letters are right here, so we're going to put them in there in just a minute. <coughs> the letters describe the good qualities that they find in each other, the reasons that they fell in love, and the reasons that they're choosing to marry. The letters are sealed in individual envelopes, and they have not seen what the other person has written. Uh, you have created your very own romantic time capsule. I recommend that you keep the box in a, a prominent place in your home so that you always see it and remember it. And if you should ever find your marriage enduring insurmountable hardships. The goal is, you open the box, you drink the wine, you read each other's letters, and when you read these letters, you will reflect upon the reasons that you fell in love and chose to marry each other here today. The hope is, however, that you'll never have to open the box. And if you never have to open the box, That's then correct. it will be something that you can do together on your fifth wedding anniversary. So, Don and Sam, I invite you to come up here. 
place your letters in the box. Oh, you seal it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> You're over there. Let's see if I can get it. Perfect. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> Probably should, should we just stay up here? Or? All right, Don and Sam, you've made your promises to each other before God and this congregation to be faithful and true in your life together. And because you've pledged your love in this fashion, I announce to all that you are husband and wife in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen.